Hey guys, so I'm Dylan McQuichuk and today we're going to be working on my 2011 Toyota Tacoma V6 manual four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, this goes for, I believe, all of the second gen and into the third gen Toyota Tacomas. They're all similar platforms, so if you're working from 2005 to 2000 or 23, 2023, um, it should look fairly similar to this. So what we're doing today is replacing the inner and outer tie rods here. So um, if you're experiencing shutter in your steering wheel on washboard, or um, maybe some play in your steering, you're wondering what it may be caused by. It's probably these guys. Um, how you can tell is you grab into your tire while it's on here, you can shake it back and forth, have a friend look in here, and you'll be able to see the play um, in this joint here as it moves back and forth. And that's gonna be the source of those vibrations and shuddering that you're experiencing. Once you're certain that it is the inner and outer tie rod, um, <clears throat> you should pick up some before you tear it apart. Um, these are from Trail Gear, this inner portion here. And then this outer portion is from Pro Forged. They're just affordable tie rods. I picked this over Himes in a tubed option because um, this is gonna be the weakest link in my suspension setup here. So if I were to hit a rock wrong and fold something, it wouldn't be my steering rack in there, it would be these guys. So that way, it's hopefully something I'll have on me already and I can just throw it in on the trail and be on my way. One thing that I'm not going to include in this video is an alignment because I don't have the materials to do it correctly. So I'm just gonna go off of what's already on here and then take it to a shop for the alignment portion afterwards. Let's get started <coughs> with replacing that guy. You're gonna need to take your wheel tire off, obviously. Um, once you've done that, you can now loosen up, I believe this is a 17 millimeter, and you also gotta take out this cotter pin there. And next, we're gonna remove this cotter pin that's holding on the castle nut to your outer tie rod. So we're just gonna crimp it down. All right, so we got that guy out. This guy's a 19 millimeter on the top here. Get your impact or your hand tools, whatever you're using. Pop that guy off. A lot of times these are seized into the spindle itself here. So I like to flip my castle nut upside down here and then thread it back on. Put it flush with the top of the joint, I guess. It's going through there. Grab your hammer and you can just pop that guy down. First try. Down and out of there. So now that it's out of this little seat that it sits in here, um, the reason why I put the castle on upside down is so you have more surface area to hit that. And when you do so, it won't mushroom out the top of this and then get stuck in here. I do highly recommend it because it can save you a whole lot of headache. Um, how you're going to be able to tell these things are shot is without the castle nut, anything on there, you shouldn't be able to freely turn these. There's probably some up and down motion like that. And then how to check the innard is first of all, they shouldn't be spaghetti noodle floppy. If you pull in and out on them, you feel a slight amount of clicking. When you have play in small amounts in these little areas, they make a very large effect in the wheel. It's definitely what's adding up to my sloppy steering. While this is still on the vehicle, I'm gonna crack these two loose, so that way I won't have to mess with it on the ground once I get it out. Um, I might reuse this nut is the only reason why. Otherwise, you could just throw it all away if your new kit came with one. I'm going to be using pipe wrench for a large portion of this job because I don't want to go buy a massive amount of wrenches that I'm not going to use in the future that I'll probably need eventually. So we're going to put this guy on here. Oh, there we go. Pop it loose. Pipe wrench off there. Press wrench off there. These guys should just spin off the end here. So. Before you mess with anything else, you want to take a second to measure the amount of threads right here and right here, just so that way you can put it back the way it was and you can get to the alignment shop without it driving like complete crap. And next, spin your boot around here. You're going to take your pliers, you're going to crimp this guy. Just let that sit around the base of this inner one. They use a crimp style, which looks like that. 
So what you're going to need to do is put a flat head on this base part here and then twist it up and it will unclamp from there and then you'll be able to remove the boot. Next, you're going to bend up this piece and there's two of them. There's one on the top, one on the bottom and that basically just keeps it from spinning out um, on its own. All right, so this is the top portion bent back and ready to go. Back portion on there. So you can see that little flat spot. Um, what I did is I threw a crowbar in here and then I chased it out the side here and used the end of the hammer to beat that back very carefully. You want to make sure that you don't slip off and damage this spline section right here. Lots of seals and you know, rings in there that you don't want to damage with a scratched up um, shaft. So I crack this guy loose. So I just turned it <clears throat> all the way driver so that way this portion sticks out a little further so it gives me a little bit more room to work. Moved. Yeah, that guy is it's done. 35's got the best of it. Alright, so there's that nut that we're gonna hopefully use in place of this one. The boot seems fine, it's not dry, cracked, or anything, so I'm also gonna be using this. I'm just gonna clean up the surfaces, wiping down where the boot sits, where all the seals run, to make sure the rack isn't leaking a whole bunch, which there's fluid in there, but it's not a large amount, I'm not super worried about it. Also going to be using this um, locking washer. My kit did come with one. Most often they will, but you can just set these on the garage floor, hammer them back out flat, and they should be almost good as new. Red Loctite, put a little dot on here. Lock washer on, just like that. And this guy in by hand here. I like to get decently snug, so you have less work to do later. I'll grab the forbidden pipe wrench. I'm not sure, honestly, what the torque spec is of this. Probably wouldn't go crazy with it. A couple more. Yeah, that's good. Again, there's a locking washer on it, um, and I also put red Loctite on it, so I'm not extremely concerned about it backing out on me. There was a crowbar here. So I'm just prying from the inner part of this frame support for the diff rolling it over as I pull this way and for the bottom portion use the hammer there you just want these guys flat put the boot on let it rest for a bit for now and then put on this nut here just run it all the way in so it's out of the way remember when you took those measurements on this portion of thread here I'm going to be using those measurements for this part. Come out a little bit. Put this back into this portion here. Run the castle nut down. Get that snug. I'm gonna recheck my measurement here. I think I'm gonna leave it with that. straight so that way you're not side loading the ball joint. I'm going to use a zip tie on the inner and outer portions of that because I don't like these. They get all warped and out of form. So I'm just going to zip tie these and then maybe I'll pick up some hose clamps. All right once you got that torqued caught up and through curl these around. I like to clip them into the cast on that. It's completely unnecessary but um that way it's just peace of mind. Never have to worry about it. If you got the exact same tie rod as me you'll have a zerk fitting that you need to thread in down here, snug it up, and then um, just put a couple pumps of grease in there. Once you've completed this side, you can go over to your passenger side, and it is the exact same process. So I'll just throw in a time lapse.
that is all for today and thank you for watching should be a few more tutorials like this in the future so please stick around if you like this content